Welcome back, dearies. I'm so happy to see you again. This menopause education will put you on the path to success with your menopause management. And I'm Menopause Taylor, your path guide. <laughs> this is video number 343, and it's on the pathology of cervical cancer, the fourth video in our unit on cervical cancer. It's a topic that I don't even cover in my book, whether you have the first edition or the second edition. And that's because it's not a cancer typical of menopausal women, but it's good to understand it in terms of how it differs from endometrial uterine cancer, which is a cancer that is typical of menopausal women. So if you want to further your understanding of cancer in general, or further understand the second most common gynecologic cancer worldwide, or further understand how it develops, this video is for you. Now, in the last video, you learned that cervical cancer begins at a very specific site in your cervix called the transformation zone. And the transformation zone is a very fine line that is inside the cervical opening. And on this model, I designated it with this red line, showing you that the transformation zone is the fine line between the glandular cells of your endometrium up here and the skin cells of your cervix down here. The glandular cells are thick, cushy, and fragile, while the skin cells are flat, thin, and tough. So there's a big difference. Now, there are many different kinds of glandular cells and many different kinds of skin cells. But the ones in your cervix have a specific name. The skin cells in your cervix are called squamous cells. And the glandular cells are called columnar cells. So the fine line that constitutes the transformation zone between the squamous cells of your cervix and the columnar cells in your endometrium is called the squamo-columnar junction. And the squamo-columnar junction is where more than 90% of cervical cancers begin. So today, we're gonna to talk about the series of changes that cause a normal cell to transform into a cancerous cervical cell. In other words, we're gonna talk about pathology. Pathology is the study of abnormalities that transform normal cells into abnormal cells. Now, way back in video 311, <laughs> in our unit on cancer in general, you learned about the progression of cell abnormalities that lead to cancer. One of the very reasons I gave you that unit before presenting this unit <laughs> was to ensure that you'd understand what I'll be teaching you today. You see, one of the most fundamental aspects of any education is the general principles that underlie everything else you learn. If you learn the general principles first, you can apply them to everything that comes later. This is why I am always so dogmatic about making sure you watch my videos in order. There is just no way you'll understand everything if you don't know the general principles. And my greatest goal is to ensure that you're never ever confused. So I go to extremes in presenting these videos in just the right order so that I will avoid confusing you. I want to always avoid confusion. I refuse to confuse. <laughs> in the unit on endometrial uterine cancer, I taught you about the pathology of endometrial uterine cancer. And that video relied on the general principles I had already taught you in video 311. The general principle was that cancers do not become cancers overnight. 
It is not ever, ever, ever a one-step process. Instead, a series of events occur over a long period of time that cause a normal cell to slowly and progressively change its appearance and function. It starts out being just slightly different from a normal cell. Then, it becomes a little more different from a normal cell. And ultimately, it becomes so different that it's difficult to identify what kind of cell it was originally. But even that much change does not make it a cancer cell. There is a progressive parade of changes that are pre-cancerous changes before a cell even becomes a cancer cell. In video 311, you learned that the word for this is dysplasia. Dysplasia is abnormal development of cells causing them to appear disorganized. And there are different degrees of dysplasia. Remember this board? It's the board on which I taught you all about dysplasia. So mild dysplasia refers to cells that are minimally disorganized. And they may just remain as mild dysplasia cells or they can continue transforming abnormally. If they continue transforming abnormally, they progress to moderate dysplasia. Moderate dysplasia refers to cells that are halfway between normal cells and completely disorganized cells. Cells that exhibit moderate dysplasia may remain that way. Alternatively, they can continue transforming and progress to severe dysplasia. Severe dysplasia refers to cells that are so disorganized that they are just one step away from being cancer cells. In video number 325 on the pathology of endometrial uterine cancer, you discovered that this is precisely the progressive parade of events that occurs in the development of endometrial uterine cancer. So what do you think? Do you think the same could be true of cervical cancer? Well, of course it can, and it is. So, now you see this principle of a cancer that develops as a result of the progressive parade of dysplasias is applicable to both endometrial uterine cancer and cervical cancer. But, even though both endometrial uterine cancer and cervical cancer progress through the parade of increasing degrees of dysplasia, there is one huge difference between the two. Care to guess what that big difference is? I think a quiz question is in order here. <laughs> Take a look. The most significant difference in the pathology of endometrial uterine cancer and cervical cancer is A. Endometrial uterine cancer progresses rapidly, while cervical cancer progresses slowly. B. Endometrial uterine cancer is an adenocarcinoma, while cervical cancer is a squamous cell carcinoma. C. Endometrial uterine cancer symptoms present late, while cervical cancer symptoms present, present early. D. Endometrial uterine cancer begins in glandular cells, while cervical cancer begins in skin cells. E. Endometrial uterine cancer spreads locally, while cervical cancer spreads via the bloodstream. F. Endometrial uterine cancer is an adenomatous cancer, while cervical cancer is an epithelial cancer. G. None of the above. H, A, C, and E above. I, B, D, and F above. Confused?
confusing? Do you see any themes? You know, sometimes I think I'm really tricky. <laughs> and that's because I like to pose the very same thing in different ways to see if you can catch on. And this is one of those times. So I'm going to show you the quiz question again, and I want you to focus on the three options that I've highlighted in red. I've played a trick on you because all three of those answer options are exactly the same. Here's why. In video number 320, which was the very first video in this unit on uterine and cervical cancers, I taught you that the kind of cell that becomes cancerous in endometrial uterine cancer is a glandular cell. And glandular cells are called adenomatous. And a cancer that begins in a glandular adenomatous cell is called an adenocarcinoma. So if you look at the options highlighted in red, all three of them say the same thing in a different way. Option B says it's an adenocarcinoma. Option D says it begins in glandular cells. And option F says it's an adenomatous cancer. And in video number 342, I taught you that it's the skin cells at the transformation zone that become cancerous in cervical cancer. Skin cells are epithelial cells. So epithelial cells that become cancerous are called epithelial cell cancers. And the name of the epithelial skin cells at the transformation zone in your cervix is squamous cells. So if you look at the options highlighted in red again, all three of them say the same thing in a different way. Option B says it's a squamous cell carcinoma. Option D says it begins in skin cells. And option F says it's an epithelial cancer. So the answer that includes all three of those is I, which I have now emphasized in bold font. So the key is to understand that while the parade of dysplasias is similar for both endometrial uterine cancer and cervical cancer, the kind of cell that becomes cancerous in the two is different. For endometrial uterine cancer, it's a glandular adenomatous cell. For cervical cancer, it's a squamous epithelial skin cell. So in discussing the pathology of cervical cancer, we had to first discuss the pathology of pre-cervical cancer. And now you know that it all starts at the transformation zone when squamous epithelial skin cells first become dysplastic. And those dysplastic cells continue to progress through more and more degrees of disorganization before they become actual cancer cells. Ideally, you want these pre-cancerous cellular changes to be detected at the pre-cancer stage so that they never become cancer. But what happens if they do turn into cancer? What symptoms would you have? That's the topic for the next video. So this was another shorty, but you know me, I just do whatever it takes to ensure a complete education. It doesn't matter whether a video is short or long. All that matters is that you get the education you deserve. MenopauseTailor.me is the place for scheduling consultations. No matter where you live, I can have a consultation with you because I do them all via video conferencing. If there's something you don't understand, or something that's confusing you, or something that is making your menopausal life less than wonderful, please schedule a consultation. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram are the places to go to follow me. And this channel is the place to stay in order to subscribe to both my newsletter and this YouTube channel. I will see you again in one week. <laughs> Bye!